It is time, ladies and gentlemen. We have made it to the end of week 9. Again, this is the final time that the AP poll will be used for the purposes of these videos. The college football playoff rankings will be coming on Tuesday night at 6 p.m. 7 Eastern. And I gotta tell you, another crazy week of college football has come upon us. And nine. Yeah, you, you. Yeah, we thought well, maybe three, maybe four top twenty-five teams would fall, but no, nine of them fall. Nine of them. We start on Thursday night, in which Coastal Carolina. I don't think this team will be ranked at all in the college ball playoff polls. Uh, I just don't think it will happen. You know, they they could not stop Troy's running game, and if it weren't for a couple of bad mistakes by Troy late, including like there was questionable decisions that Troy had in this game late, like I I, I do not think Coastal would get out of this one alive. But yet here the Green Chickens are. They made it out. They are still in the race in the Sun Belt East. Sun Belt East is a little crowded now. Georgia State is now in the race too, with Appalachian State and Coastal Carolina now as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how that race goes. Um, so we move on to Saturday, and I got to tell you, I'm I'm just I'm just done with the Longhorns this season. I'm ready for basketball season for the Longhorns at this point. I am beyond ready. This is this is this is I don't know what this is. Another blown lead. For the Texas Longhorns. Another one. Oklahoma. Oklahoma State. And now Baylor. This doesn't make any sense. This does not make any sense. And I'm telling you. Like this Baylor defense. They were able to. They were able to. This, they were able to snuff out. You know what the problem was. You know B. John Robinson. They were able to snuff out. The, the thing that could be the problem for them. They didn't even. I don't think B. John was even a factor in this game. He was not a factor. I know Abram was. I know Abram Smith was for Baylor. Yeah, Abram Smith was. He had 113 yards. But B. John, non-factor. You know, I mean Casey Thompson. I mean he's he, he, he's doing his best out there. But it doesn't look like the horns are going to be doing anything significant, if you know what I mean. Four losses, just as I predicted, probably might even be more in all honesty. This is not Texas football. And we all know it, it's not Texas football. I mean, you got things like a random dicker the kicker, you know, fake punt when, you know, there there's no need for that. The no need for that. And that cost Texas late. Cost them so much late in this game. And Baylor was able to get out of there with another victory. Huge victory for the Bears. Huge victory. And I said this is going to be huge for the Baylor Bears if they get this victory. And they were able to get it out. 14 to 3 in the fourth quarter. You know, they went by 7. And now they're sitting real pretty in the Big 12 race. They're sitting real pretty, you know. The, the only thing Baylor has left to go through now is Oklahoma. Again, what a balanced attack this Baylor team has. I mean, they were throwing all sorts of stuff at Texas. Option plays, deep routes, the run game. I mean, again, what a balanced attack this Baylor team has. They're going to be moving on up in these polls. I'm telling you, they're going to be moving on up a lot, probably. I mean, again, they only have, they don't. I don't know how far Baylor will move up. But, I mean, the, um, they don't have a significant win, I will say that. So, I think that's going to keep them back. And that'll be the same thing with Oklahoma State. And we'll talk about the team that I think will be in the top ten uh, in a minute here. Um, but, yeah, Baylor got it, got it done. So, what about Miami Pitt? Well, what did I tell you? I told you. I told y'all that if Pitt, you know, was able to underestimate Miami, they were going to get caught. They were going to get caught, and they got caught. You know, Kenny Pickett, he he he, he, did, he did well. But Van Dyke did way better. This, this pit defense is terrible. 
it it's the reason why they got beat in the shootout by Western Michigan. Not good defense, and it happened again. You don't you don't let a backup quarterback that's been trying to you know salvage his season torch you for 400 plus yards. Miami's defense got two big turnovers, two big stops, and you know just a bunch of other things. I mean there was also there was a big controversial play at the end, you know, with a fumble that went out of bounds. But at the end of the day, you know it could not stop Miami from throwing the ball and doing what they need to do, playing efficient. And now, the ACC Coastal is even more chaotic. How, how, do, how did we get there? How did we get there? Coastal chaos. I love to see it. What about the number two team in the country? I personally don't know if the committee is going to rank Cincinnati at number two. A lot of people, you know, are. it's kind of a divided. But with the way Cincinnati's defense played again, I mean, come on, this is an, this is another textbook defense that is just on point. I mean, again, Tulane has been battered by injuries, battered by their opponents. You know, I mean, they've played way too many good opponents this year. I mean, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, and this this was a pretty much unfair. The defense with Cincinnati got four turnovers, 17 unanswered late, and Desmond Ritter threw for another three touchdowns. A lot of people are going to say, oh, well, Cincinnati struggled with Tulane, but the same thing applied to Oklahoma. Oklahoma only won by five. Cincinnati won by 19. There's really no debate here with that, so that that's a common opponent like right there out the window, like Cincinnati um, for huge turnovers. I mean, you know, a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, Cincinnati sleepwalked, blah, blah, blah. Personally, I think this is the number two team in the country. I mean, I get it. I get it. You know, where people are coming from, I get it. Cincinnati does tend to sleepwalk. That same stuff applies to Oklahoma. Not this week, though, but that same stuff applies. You, again, Oklahoma should be sleepwalking against Kansas. You know, they shouldn't be down with all the talent they have against a mediocre Texas team by 20-something points at one point. You can't have this type of stuff. You shouldn't be in a shootout with Tulane. That, that's the type of Oklahoma that, that this team has been. And again, Oklahoma, they're setting themselves up for failure, but not this week again, though. Not this week. Uh, I'll talk about Oklahoma in a minute here. Uh, but Cincinnati, I, I think this is a team that is ripe for success, and there's going to be at least two opportunities now. And we'll talk about that in a moment. In fact, this will be the thumbnail for tonight's video, so uh, I mean, I'm excited to talk about it. But Michigan, Michigan State, how about Kenneth Walker the third? Kenneth Walker done punched his ticket for the highest, but he punched it right in this game Five touchdowns, 190 plus yards. Michigan, you had a 16 point lead. I know people are going to say ref ball. Oh, well, there was some ref ball in this game. Kate McNamara, you know, did very well in the passing game. I mean, McNam excuse me. McNamara did very well in the passing game. A bad interception late, though. It is what it is for Michigan. And Michigan, again, under Jim Harbaugh, blows it. In a big game against a top 25 team, you know this this shouldn't happen. I don't care if there's ref ball. You don't blow a 16 point lead. You don't do that. Okay, you don't do that. If you want to be a top team, you don't do that. You don't blow 16 point leads out here. Okay, okay. Now Michigan State, they have what it takes. Now they have they have. They, they were able to prove themselves. I mean, again, the passing defense looked kind of rough. If you let Kate McNamara just throw it all over you for like 300 yards, again, that was the big issue with Michigan State's defense. But at the end of the day, Kenneth Walker, Heisman. There is no doubt now. We can talk about him for Heisman. Let's do this, guys. Let's go with, with Kenneth Walker Horizon. How about Iowa, Wisconsin, though? You let Graham Mertz run for two touchdowns, throw for another, 
and you let this Wisconsin defense steamroll you, Iowa. Struggling. So I remember when Iowa was number two? You know, number two, number three in the country? Yeah. What happened? What happened? This this has been a new low. Like now Wisconsin. I believe Wisconsin leads the Big Ten West, if I'm not mistaken. Them and Minnesota. And Minnesota has two bad losses. Or rather they have one bad loss to Bowling Green. But that other loss to Ohio State was kind of understandable. Now it, it's it's gonna be weird at the Big Ten West, let me tell you. Just gonna be weird as hell. Uh, I, I I don't know what's going on here, man. I don't know what's going on. What about Iowa State? The rivals for the Hawkeyes. Well, now there was some ref ball apparently in this game. Again, this game was on ESPN Plus because, yeah, I don't know why. But anyway, Jarrett Nagy able to outdo these Cyclones and a promising Iowa State team that had high expectations now has three losses. Potentially, you know, they are not looking pretty in the Big 12 race. You know, you know, you had to beat West Virginia to stay in this race, and you didn't do it. You, you didn't do it. You choked it away. You choked it away. 14 points in the fourth quarter by West Virginia. Choked it away, Iowa State. You choked it away. It is what it is. So now we move on to the 3.30 Eastern games. And again, there wasn't a lot here. In all honesty, in fact, once these games started to get a little bit rough to watch, I, I turned I turned everything off, went to work for a couple, went to work for about an hour or two, and you know I mean again, not a lot here. Texas Tech, Oklahoma again, you know Oklahoma struggled throughout the season, but they were able to get three huge turnovers against Texas Tech. Caleb Williams playing like the Caleb Williams we saw against Texas again you know 400 yards passing six touchdowns easy victory for Oklahoma I'm not the number one team in the country there is no doubt now and in fact this Georgia team has clinched the SEC East they will be going to Atlanta on the 7th fourth they will be going to Atlanta to face whoever comes out the wild, wild SEC West. And this Georgia defense uses a trio of huge turnovers late in the first half. They put away Florida early. I mean, Florida was only up, what, three to nothing at one point. And, you know, just Loretta, Florida, Loretta Georgia was up, you know, three to nothing at one point. And it did Florida had scored. But, I mean, again, Georgia got those three turnovers. And these were like in like less than three minutes. Like less than three minutes, Georgia was in a commanding position and put away the Gators just like that. Despite the fact that Anthony Richardson started, Florida played three quarterbacks in this game, and it just it was just a mess. It was just a mess for the Gators. A lost season for this Gators team. You, you can't. I don't know where Dan Mullen is right now. He's got to be feeling himself right now. He's got to be feeling himself because this is this is kind of this is kind of rough to be looking at. You get blown out like that, you don't even try to get back into it. So what about Colorado, Oregon? I did not watch this game, by the way. I mean, the Ducks they did take care of business a little bit. I'll say a little bit here because I mean they did allow 29 points and a lot of yards from Colorado but that was probably a lot of garbage time yards but in any case the backfield got three touchdowns Anthony Brown played efficient got 300 yards three touchdowns himself and Colorado gets you remember that promising defensive performance from Colorado early in the season against Texas A&M yeah that didn't happen here they got whooped by Oregon. Oregon should be looking real pretty when the college football playoff rankings come out on Tuesday. Should be looking real pretty. Another team who's going to be looking real pretty is Sam Hartman and those Wake Forest Demon Deacons. Two touchdowns running for Hartman. Three more 
passing 400 more yards for him and Duke gets smacked by Wake Forest and Wake Forest potentially potentially this is top 10 Wake Forest we're talking about here this is Wake Forest top 10 material right here my goodness and now the ACC's playoff hopes rest in the hands of the Wake Forest Demon Deacons crazy crazy stuff right I know <laughs> I know how about 7 Eastern we move on to the later slate of games here now Kansas Oklahoma State again Oklahoma State took care of business balanced attack tenacious defense out there a lot of turnovers for Kansas and they couldn't stop the Cowboys on the ground or in the air again like Oklahoma State at 200 yards passing 200 yards rushing took care of business took care of business how about Ole Miss and Auburn um, Matt Corral, both his ankles are injured. Both his ankles are messed up. I mean, yeah, I mean one, one ankle got injured in the Tennessee game, and the other got injured in this game, and he just not looked 100% throughout this entire game. In fact, he may have lost a little bit of points for me, you know, for his Heisman candidacy. You know, I mean, again, Ole Miss, um, they, they did not have a good day on on the field against Auburn. This Auburn defense was tenacious out there. They this is this is an Auburn team that has me thinking of the Auburn team from a couple years ago, I believe is either twenty seventeen or twenty eighteen, where Auburn had two losses and they were in serious, serious consideration for a college ball playoff spot. Can that happen again? Because Bo Nix decided to play efficient tonight. Three touchdowns for him. Tank Bisbee ran all over this Ole Miss defense and I mean Ole Miss has two losses now so the, the, the fact of the matter is, is that they've lost both to Alabama and Auburn unlikely to get anything really in the um, in the SEC West now it looks like it's gonna be down to Alabama Auburn and maybe Texas A&M crazy stuff right there crazy stuff We'll see how this goes for these two teams down the line, but the way November is shaping up to be, uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen, man. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, I do not know, but it's shaping up for Auburn's magic to strike once again. Well, how about the Ponies and the Cougs? The Ponies and the Cougs had a duel out in Houston, and yet it was Marcus Jones and a hundred yard touchdown kick return for you know that touchdown to just walk it off for Houston again the only puzzling thing for Houston was that lost to Texas Tech at the beginning of the season Clayton Toon we haven't talked about Clayton Toon at all like I don't think that's a name that that's a name that just has not hit me that uh, I mean, again and let me look Hold on, let me backtrack a little bit. Like, Clayton Toon has been at Houston for like five years, I swear. And he never struck me as that guy that could lead, you know, Houston. I mean, with the way Houston was going under Dana Holgerson over the past few years, you know, it, it just didn't look too good. I mean, Houston was down. Houston was pretty much out of it for a couple years. And here they come. They're back in it back in it and Houston maybe I think both these teams should be ranked in all honesty you know 400 yards per Clayton Toon 400 yards Tanner Mordecai chipped in for 300 as well you know I mean Houston was up early 17 to nothing I mean Mordecai's best efforts in this game there was a lot of good efforts in this game for both these teams I think both these teams deserve to be ranked both these teams deserve it they, they need it and Houston comes up with a big victory and now now the Cougs they have only a couple games left in American Conference play and it's looking like Houston could be punching their ticket to the American Conference Championship which plays out very very well because you know that's 
that's another top 25 victory potentially for Cincinnati potentially if you know if Cincinnati can make it through everybody else and SMU first but we'll see how things go we'll see how things go um, Kentucky Mississippi State I did not I did not see this coming I did not see this coming potentially I, I really didn't see this coming I say potentially because you know I, I did I didn't think I didn't think that Mississippi State would actually do it but they did it they did it my goodness another top 15 win for the dogs four turnovers forced ball control they had the ball for 41 minutes Will Rogers 300 plus passing yards only three incompletions none of those were picks can Mississippi State five and three Probably going to be bowl eligible with two of the biggest victories in the SDC this year. What a crazy, crazy statistic! Now I, I, I just, I just don't know, man. Like this, this year's been weird. This year's been weird. Like Kentucky was not going to win the SEC East regardless, but that, that did not help right there. And Jordan, that's how Georgia clinches with Kentucky's loss. That's how Georgia clinches right there. Um, so I've got another big one. Penn State, Ohio State. The Buckeyes, they escape. We were talking, they escaped this game, you know. A missed field goal by Penn State near the end of this game, you know. The Buckeyes were, were they were not, they were not, it was not easy. It was not easy. Tenacious defense, though. A big, you know, scoop and score by a big man for Ohio State early in the, um, Early in the uh, second half, I believe, or was it the first half? I can't remember exactly. I mean, Sean Clifford played well. You know, you got Trevion Henderson still running it up for 150 something yards, but Ohio State made some mistakes in this game. A lot of mistakes by Ohio State that they can't have, you know, down the line. You know, even though Michigan lost, Michigan's still a team that's tenacious. Michigan State, too. You know, a team that is, uh, I mean, this is Ohio State. You know, an Ohio State team that has not had the greatest momentum this year. They've struggled a lot in big games. You know, they've struggled a lot. And this is another one where C.J. Stroud just didn't look. He didn't look. He didn't look like C.J. Stroud that was tossing four touchdowns every week. I mean, he only had one touchdown pass in this game, if I'm correct. So I mean, things were not good for Ohio State. I mean, this, I mean, this had two turnovers. Like back to back to start off this game. That's that's how crazy this one was. That's how crazy this game was. And Ohio State, you know, they were gonna knock Penn State out of the polls entirely. It's just such a disappointment. I mean, Sean Clifford probably again probably wasn't a hundred percent, but it doesn't matter. Um, you know, he played a good he played a good effort, but Ohio State just had more in them. It is what it is. Ohio State I don't know where they're going to fall. Their strength of schedule is right around the same as Cincinnati's, you know, just a little bit higher. So, you know, it is what it is there. But again, you know, Ohio State and Cincinnati schedules are backloaded. So, we'll see. Because, I mean, a lot of Ohio State Cincinnati fans are going at it with each other for some reason. I don't know why. But it is what it is there. Ohio State gets a victory. Again, I don't know how the top five is going to shake out. I don't know how the top 25 is going to shake out at all. It's going to be a wild top 25 on Tuesday night. How about Notre Dame? Kyron Williams is a beast, man. Once again, nearly 200 yards. Notre Dame do, has a duel with the Tar Heels out in South Bend. Get a, they got a huge victory there. Notre Dame is probably going to be top 10. And that helps Cincinnati immensely there. You know, this is probably going to be a top 10 Notre Dame team. Again, a lot of power five opponents for Notre Dame. That's that's probably why, you know, too. I mean, Notre Dame's just been playing efficient football. I mean, they, 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 they do what they need to do. Again, the quarterback system that they have, you know, things have just worked out for the Fighting Irish. Things have just worked out. And that's how they're back into the top 10. It's gonna happen. Sorry, it's, 
going to happen. I know a lot of people don't like Notre Dame, but it's going to happen. Notre Dame will be back in the top ten. I don't know where in the top ten. They're going to be back in there come Tuesday. So what about very, very late into the night? Very late into the night, we had Virginia BYU. BYU, they could still have a Edwin season, and that's crazy stuff. I mean, Tyler Algier, five TDs. Jaron Hall throws another three TDs. The BYU defense was able to come up with three turnovers. Brandon Armstrong played pretty, pretty well, but again, he had two picks. One of, the, one of those... Um, one of those picks ended up putting him out the game. BYU was able to pull away late, and they—they, they, I mean, this BYU team is this, this. Where was this BYU team at? You know, against Boise State. Where was this BYU team at against Baylor? I mean, they are scoring. They were scoring at will out there. I mean, maybe it's because Virginia's defense was not good. I mean, Virginia's defense hasn't been good at all this year. But I mean. BYU was able to get it done. They got it done. I think this is a top 25 team as well, in all honesty. So we'll see how the committee ranks them because they have huge victories again. You know, they've gotten um, five Power 5 victories, if I'm not mistaken, this year. The Cougs do. And last but not least, the game that ended about, like, I don't know, like 20, actually 30 minutes ago. Because you're seeing this about 30 to 40 minutes after, I, you know. But anyway, nonetheless, Fresno State, San Diego State, a game, a huge game in the Mountain West. And Jake Hayner played a pretty efficient game. Jordan Mims, halfback for the Bulldogs of Fresno State. Two huge touchdowns over 100 plus yards. In fact, I think it was like 186 yards. The number one rushing defense looked they did not look good. San Diego State, you know, relying on Lucas Johnson to pass, did look good. Three bad turnovers by the Aztecs in this game. And the Aztecs are the latest undefeated team to fall. I'm not sure how many are left. I believe seven undefeated teams are left in the FBS. Or was it six? I think it's six. Seven, six or seven undefeated teams left in FBS football. And it's going to be crazy to see, you know, again, I don't know how the committee is going to do their poll. Uh, we, we don't know if it's going to be, you know, like head-to-head, -head, strength of schedule. I mean, there's all sorts of different criteria that they're supposed to follow. But we all know that the committee doesn't care about what they're supposed to follow. And I'm not going to do reactions to the top 25 this year. You know, I'm, I'm just going to tell you all that right now. That's the first thing on the docket here. Just to wrap this up. Not gonna tell y'all, you know, what my reactions are to the top 25. We're gonna do all that in the preview and stuff like that. We're gonna do all that in the preview for the week. And again, the previews for the month of November and the first couple weeks of December will be out on Wednesdays from now on. Just so y'all know, I've said that already. So Wednesdays, that's gonna be it's gonna be how this is gonna work out. Uh, and again, another crazy week of college football. I mean, I did not expect nine top 25 teams to fall the way they did. I thought it was going to be 10 for a second, but then BYU again pulled away late and was able to get that huge victory against Virginia. And, you know, things, these division races are starting to get a little bit crazy. The Pac-12 is still crazy. You think about it, you really, really think about it, Oregon could have another loss down the line. I mean, could they could? Utah is still lurking. They, you know, it's it's gonna be crazy to see how this how that affects the Pac-12 because I mean, you know, I think every Pac-12 team except Oregon has three losses, two or three losses. Most teams have two losses in conference play, but most have three overall. So I don't know how that's going to affect this conference. Um, the SEC West is going to be interesting to see, you know, again, Ole Miss pretty much eliminated themselves from the conversation by losing to Alabama and Auburn, but A&M could insert themselves into the conversation by beating Auburn next week. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens because Alabama 
you know, they were off this week, but they could be, you know, they could be, you know, in a trap game with LSU. I mean, you never know what, you never know what LSU could do because, I mean, didn't think much of the Florida game, but then you saw how the Florida game turned out. But I'll, I'll talk about Alabama LSU and stuff like that next next time, which is Wednesday again. Now, that'll be when the next college football preview will be. And for all that being said, with all that being said, everybody, I'm going to get on out of here, skedaddle, take a nice long rest, and we'll see you all again very, very soon. I do have some other videos lined up that are going to be ready to hop out the oven, you know, and get onto your timelines, your, your YouTube timelines very soon, because so I do have some updates and stuff like that. And yeah, y'all take care. Have a good night. I hope y'all enjoyed this college football weekend because I certainly did. Good night, everybody. Big Boy Sports signing off.